Mike Huber, lead columnist of Moneyball Hitter Magazine, team hitting specialist. Today is going to be an interesting topic today. We're talking about back in my day, in the 1970s era, 1970s, 80s era. Uh, I'm near 50 years old here. Uh, we didn't have hitting instruction. A lot of it, I, the uh, only hitting instruction, real hitting instruction I got is maybe when I got to my varsity uh, career in high school. And uh, up until that point, uh, basically, me, the guys in the neighborhood, were playing lob league baseball after school and on the weekends. Okay, that's where you lob the ball, and then you go find a park that has a fence or some trees to hit it over, and you got the bases and you play, uh, you know, pitcher's hand out type of thing. Okay, and we were also playing Little League Baseball at the time. You know, a lot of us guys were uh, pretty pretty good, best hitters on our team, made the all-star games and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we were still playing Little League Baseball two to three times a week, okay, in, in the spring and especially in the summertime, okay? Now, if you are a new age professional uh, hitting coach, you're probably not going to like to hear this, but I am convinced, uh, as per our Moneyball training formula that we use, which is pretty consistent with the fact that I am convinced that playing lob league helped uh, not only my swing, but a couple of my buddies' swings that were uh, good hitters also at the same time. It helped us weight back. It helped us use our hips so we can get the ball over the fence. Okay. Um, it uh, helped us weight. It was the secret, one of the secrets on helping us staying back is playing lob league baseball, okay? And we didn't have uh, coaches telling you know t telling us to swing down on the ball or to swing level, okay? We were out playing, having fun, doing what was natural. We wanted to hit a ball over the fence or hit a double, okay? And if we got a hit, if we got a base hit, it was by mistake because we were going for uh, power shots basically. And if we popped up, it was pretty embarrassing and we, you know, we did what we had to do not to pop up again. All right. So basically, um, that wasn't ruining my swing because, you know, in my town, I was always one of the better hitters and I was playing a lot of league baseball. Now, when I got into the high school, guess what? I was playing men's softball, slow pitch softball, my junior and senior year, especially. Okay, me and a bunch of other buddies were always being recruited by the men's leagues to play slow pitch softball. Okay, again, making us wait on our back leg, making us hit the ball deeper, making us use our hips. Okay, and uh, by that point, some people were saying, oh, you know, that could ruin your baseball swing, blah, blah, blah. I never really took it seriously, but uh, as I became a hitting coach, uh, and developed the Moneyball hitting formula that is uh, specifically trains the muscles to stay back like that, hit off the back leg, and use your hips. Now, there's a lot of technique and drills that go into that, but uh, I'm just telling you uh, that's what we did in the 70s and early 80s when there wasn't this big bang of, you know, um, video technology out there, video analysis, professional hitting instruction, Okay, back in the 70s was, was when Charlie Lau started just, just to come out. Okay, we didn't know much about him up until the 80s. Okay, and, uh, you know, basically when I started to take on some Charlie Lau stuff late in my varsity high school career and into college, my power went away. Okay, and there was no way that I was going to take that Charlie Lau stuff and take it to professional baseball. So I didn't. Okay, I made it to Division One uh, baseball, basically. But back in those days, especially in the 70s, when we were playing, you know, slow pitch men's softball, and we were uh, playing lob league, we were still the best hitters on the team. Uh, that was fun. Okay, that uh, we were naturally competing, having fun, competing against our friends. Okay. Uh, obviously, nowadays, that's not the way it is, especially in the more affluent towns, because everybody's got their own travel team, professional instruction, and everything's always supervised, 
okay, and more mechanical and, not, and less natural. So it's no surprise to us why Major League Baseball right now is on a downswing for the last uh, five to ten years. Uh, hitting is too mechanical. It's taken much too seriously. Okay, too many flat swings, too many downward swings, too many swings with uh, leading with the hands and the back knees and the knobs of the bat, and all this and that. And uh, high school, college baseball, uh, the hitting statistics are down. Uh, those bats, uh, BB core bats you're using, aren't helping. So you have to use, learn how to use the body. Nobody is really making the adjustment there that we see. Okay, and at the major league level, the minor league level, um, the hitting statistics are down considerably, worse since 1972. Okay, so I'm telling you that I came up with this Moneyball formula based on my thoughts when I was a little kid. What the heck was I doing when I was a little kid? Why was I hitting so good throughout my little league and you know, late travel league and high school uh, career and even college. I did, I did well in my co college too, until it's all started to fade away when you know, I was taught this uh, Charlie Lau stuff. Okay, so what was I doing? So this is how, uh, one of the reasons why I came up with the Moneyball training formula. And yes, you need, you need to get trained into, into this formula because there's so much, there's so much a mixture of different types of philosophies that have to do with the, the linear mechanics and the downward swing mechanics and using the small muscles in your body that uh, most baseball players' bodies are confused as to what really is natural. So if you go out and start playing lob league and, and softball, uh, more than likely, you know, uh, the good um, rotational, effective rotational mechanics of baseball that you need to hit for power and average is probably not going to lock in because you need to be taught that type of swing, okay? It can lock in possibly by accident if you do it, if you play lob league baseball long enough or earn enough men's softball leagues long enough and you're playing baseball at the same time, but you know, uh, that's more than likely not going to happen nowadays like it did uh, with myself, okay? But you need know, to know how to lock the, back, lock the back leg in, how to wait, what part of the hips that you should be using, okay? Uh, how to wait and hit a curveball, how to keep uh, what you sh where your hand placement should be, what should be, you be doing with your hands, how not to grip the bat too tight or to have the yips when you swing because that's what happens on curveballs and change-ups. You want to become a, a good hitter? Um, learn how to hit change-ups and curveballs without changing your power swing, okay? There's techniques and trips that, uh, tricks to that and uh, you know that's what the Moneyball formula is all about. But I can tell you this is when I first started training the Moneyball hitting formula, uh, I saw a growing trend that we were helping hitters and teams hit 50 points higher in their regular slugging percentage and batting average at the same time, which helped teams win more, basically, about 25% more of their games. And uh, if the team that I trained, uh, whether it be a high school or a college team, uh, if they had a pretty good pitching staff and defense and they had a pretty good program, uh, you know, the first two high schools that I trained won state championships within the first two or three years learning the system. Okay, that's how powerful the system is. Okay, the first college team that I trained, we didn't have uh, good facilities. They were a 250 hitting team before I trained this team. They hit 340, and after practices, we played 16 inch softball games. Okay, and I'm not blowing any smoke. Okay. This is how far off Major League Baseball professional instruction is. These baseball academies out here, they would never even think about doing something like this, okay? Our t techniques are different. We are getting some big time results, okay? 50 point swings, and learning it in the first year, okay? Power numbers going up, batting average going up. More kids are getting scholarships, okay? Uh, right now we have uh, a special with minor league ballplayers. 
you can pay us per your performance. Okay, we'll train you for free. You sign a contract with us, we'll train you for free. And uh, <clears throat> when it happens for you, if you stick with it and your numbers go up by 50 points, if you're a 250 hitter and your number goes up 50 points and all of a sudden you're a 300 hitter, you're only hitting you know, three to five home runs and then we get you to 15 to 25 home runs, okay? Just by sharing our secrets with you, okay? We've got a new program out that you pay us per, per uh, performance, okay? You get that next contract and you and you signed on with us prior to that. We and you, we get help you uh, put up the numbers. We'll work like that, okay? Because we've been doing this consistently for 20 years, okay? It all stems back to when uh, my little town that I grew up in, Morton Grove, were playing lob league baseball, and then playing our little league and all star games on, on at the same time. It didn't hurt our swing; it probably enhanced it. I'm playing high school baseball, I'm playing in men's slow pitch softball leagues. And I was always the best hitter on my high school team. Okay? <clears throat> and yeah, there was a couple of people saying you shouldn't do that. You know what? Why should I change anything when I'm getting results? And it's all about results. Okay? So uh, if you are a 20, 20 year old kid and you were watching this video, okay? You, you haven't heard this information before. If you are, you know, 35, 45, 55, 65 years old, you might say, yeah, that's, that is what we did. Okay? We didn't have any instruction like it. We might want to take this guy seriously. Okay? But I'm telling you, if you want to be a good hitter, okay, you're not going to get anywhere being a linear hitter. You're not going to get anywhere being a downward swing hitter. Okay, uh, you have to be uh, a rotational hitter, except you're not going to get anywhere, anywhere the way that they're te teaching rotational hitting out there. Okay, you have to be an effective rotational hitter, and you've got to learn the secrets right now if you want to go to the next level. It is as simple as that. Because the average batting average in high school and college right now is about between 260 and 270 with hardly any home runs. And the minor leagues and the major leagues is about 250 with below five home runs. The average hitter. So if you are a hitter, you're most likely an average hitter watching this. If you are way above average and you're watching this, Congratulations, keep on doing what you're doing. It's probably the right thing, okay? That's maybe 5% of you, okay? But the rest of you, if you think that you're gonna go anywhere, hitting-wise, your hitting career is going to stop unless you learn how to hit for higher averages, higher slugging percentages at the same time. You have to be the best hitter on your team, or at least the top one of the top three hitters on your team if not one of the top five to 10 in your league, okay? That's the only way that you get noticed and that's when the scouts come running and you know, the numbers uh, consistently over time don't lie. It's all about the numbers. You gotta do anything you gotta do to hit the numbers. That's why we have our training formula and it works right away. We call it a quick fix. If you don't believe in quick fixes in, in hitting, don't watch our videos. Don't go to our website. Okay? We're a little bit different. The more scientific, the more simple, the more powerful. Simple as that. Thanks for joining me today. We will talk to you next time. Moneyball Hitter Magazine, Mike Huber, over and out.